Hey, what's up, what's up? It's August 18th, and this is another video of FedHex blabbing about dance concepts. What's going on? Uh, <laughs> how's it going? Uh, my name is Albert Huang, aka FedHex, and this is just sort of a place where I blab sort of endlessly about dance concepts. If you've seen my other videos, you probably uh, know that already. And if you can see down in the track listing below, I'm assuming this video is like 20-ish minutes? I don't know. Um, anyway, uh, today's spiel is going to be about narrative. Uh, I, the reason I'm going to bring this up is basically I did this little video a little while ago about all the essentials of the moonwalk. And when you know the moonwalk, when you learn the moonwalk, there's uh, basically one way you got to do it. Uh, and that way, one, one important aspect of that is you have to actually know the mechanics of how to move backwards and importantly to sell the illusion you have to know the mechanics of the narrative of moving forwards right so if you have the story of walking forwards if you can incorporate that story on top of the mechanics of walking backwards that's the illusion of the moonwalk um and this really stuck a, struck a chord with uh youtube user snowspin so uh snowspin made a comment and thank you very much for the comment which is like hey could you elaborate on that can you talk a little bit more about how narrative plays a role in dance um and lucky for you uh i can <laughs> oh i can uh i have a lot of background in the art form of narrative or, or at least an academic understanding of how narrative works uh you probably didn't know this but i uh studied a lot of theater uh i went to undergraduate for theater um which was amazing. It was such an amazing education. I learned so much about uh, how to work with other people. I learned so much about how to uh, be project oriented. Um, but importantly for this particular topic, uh, I learned all about narrative, all about the different pieces of narrative and how to incorporate that not only in my artwork, but in my daily life. Um, and so I'm gonna just try to touch some of the main points of why it's really cool to know how a narrative works and to have a sort of intuitive understanding of those pieces. Um, and I think my academic understanding of narrative makes it difficult for me to do videos like this because I didn't really prepare a beginning, middle, and end. I don't have an arc. I don't have a spine. I don't have a driving force. Other than I want to communicate to you, YouTube viewer, um, how cool this stuff is. Okay, so uh, what is narrative? Narrative is like just story, right? Uh, it's the beginning, middle, and end. Uh, it's the ability to uh, have something that uh, so story the the the, um, the utility in, in like having a story uh, is it's really engaging right uh, if you were to watch a movie and there are plenty of movies that like try to not have any narrative not plenty uh, but I mean like um, there are enough art movies like abstract movies that are just like compositional uh, you learn about this stuff in art school, um, and whatever, it's weird, it's a thing, uh, you don't need to go see them because they're boring, uh, they are interesting because they don't have narrative and they have other things that you might be looking at, they're just like form based or whatever, or they, maybe they're just really pretty, um, but yeah, basically any movie that you're gonna go see in any, like, standard movie theater in America or around the world, they're gonna have, they're gonna show you movies that have narrative in them, right? And that's just a story, and the reason that a story is so important is because you, as a viewer, want to emotionally connect with something, right? You want to, like, be tuned in to somebody else on a journey, and you want to, like, ride with them on their journey and learn the things that they learn, experience the things that they experience, and it's really nice because you get to sit in a comfy, cozy, like, weird bucket seat uh, and eat popcorn and drink soda while you're watching somebody cl climb the Himalayas or whatever, right? So it's this really convenient uh, thing that human beings have where we get to, like, take somebody else's experiences and impose them onto, like, our imaginations of how we might experience that alongside next to them, right? Um... So uh, that's sort of the utility of a narrative. It, it really it takes your viewer and uh, engages them into your process. So uh, I don't know if you've seen, and you know this is a, a dance video, so we're mostly talking about dance here. But I don't know if you've seen it. Maybe you'll go to uh, to a club or you'll go to like some conference or something, and you'll see these dancers. And sometimes they're just like boom, boom, ch, ch, ch. they're just like only mechanical, and it's kind of boring to watch sometimes. Um, sometimes the super mechanical people, you can tell that they're like 
designers or engineers, like that's sort of the way they think of it. And they're like working through problems and you can see their concentration and you can see them like learning ab about new conceits. So that, that process of like learning new things and like, uh, you know, creating sort of riddles and answering those riddles, that is a part of narrative, right? That, that has like a human drive and it has a beginning, middle and end. Huh, what's this problem? Oh, here's a nice elaboration of the problem. Oh, wow, that comes to a solution, right? That that piece is a narrative. So when you see, but sometimes obviously you have some dancers who just like practice drills and they just do like waves over and over again, and it's not really that engaging if they don't have narrative associated with it, right? So here's just like the drill of like practicing an arm wave, and this might be cool the first time you've seen this, but it's not going to be super cool if you just you know, if I come out on the dance floor, I clear the space, and I'm like, what's up? How's it going? Right? Really, I mean, here, watch this. So there's just that, that move, and then watch this with like a little bit of narrative inflection on top of it. Or maybe, uh, maybe, maybe this one. Right? I don't know. So basically there's like, you can see there's a human component that's layered on top, and that's really, like, the, the first one is me saying, I forgot what the first one was, but like me saying, I want to whip this energy through, right? So there's like this need to like take energy and force it out, boom, right? And then the second one was like, huh, let's ride this energy. Let's see what's going on here, right? Um, so those are, I don't know, two quick little tricks, and that that, that hopefully just sort of illustrates to you um, that applying narrative is going to be way more interesting than just going out on the dance floor and running through drills, right? Um, so let's, uh, let's take a moment to sort of deconstruct, uh, the components of narrative. Um, <clears throat> so this is stuff that you probably learned in like, uh, middle school, elementary school. What is, what is a story? A story has a beginning, a middle and end. Um, but if you like drill down deeper into those pieces, you'll see that the beginning has a relationship to the middle, which has a relationship to the end. Uh, one thing that I really liked, uh, one, one nugget of, of wisdom that sort of stuck with me from uh, my days of, my years of studying theater was uh, that narrative, that the, that uh, a narrative like starts with a set of given circumstances and it ends with an <clears throat> something that is inevitable yet surprising. And I just love that, um, I love that paradox of that idea that, that like that you have something that like it's sort of the only resolution that we can land upon with the given circumstances, but somehow it's still surprising. Somehow, right? I mean, I guess if we were all computers and we took the inputs of the given circumstances, we'd be like, oh, whatever. At the end, Hamlet and like all of his family dies, right? Whatever. That's how a computer might like interpret that experience of Shakespeare's Hamlet. Right, uh, but really, I mean, that is sort of the inevitable uh, resolution of the given circumstances. Um, that there's like this king, uh, who's like, or there's this prince who's like bitterly, bitterly unhappy, and like has to resolve all these weird, deep psychological demons, uh, and all of those demons are very related to his family. Right, uh, whatever. I I don't want to like wax poetic too much about. Hamlet and Shakespeare or whatever but basically what I'm saying is that you have these given circumstances and as the human you're like oh no that I think there might be some ending that is like maybe doomsday-ish and then when you get to the end it's not like oh that was just inevitable right that was like a foregone conclusion like who cares yeah, what's going on is that there's a surprise you're like wow that's really touching or really like um uh, really emotionally, it somehow really emotionally involves me in that process. That is, it's surprising, right? It's, it, this, it's a revelation uh, despite the fact that it is somehow inevitable too. So anyway, uh, to illustrate <clears throat> a narrative, I'm going to actually, I decided ahead of time that I wanted to sing a song to you uh, because songs are narratives as well. Uh, and the song is going to be Happy Birthday, right? So, um, da 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 um, so that's like a, a just a 10 second narrative it's actually uh, it has four measures 
Um, it sort of has this nice call and response feel to it. Uh, but uh, the other reason I want to bring up a specific example is because I want us to be able to dig into um, the specific aspects of that narrative, right? Uh, so the da 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 da. That's sort of the given circumstance. That's the the groundwork that we lay here. And and you know if we take that to a dancing metaphor, that's like you getting if you were to walk on stage and then go like this or something, then you're you're saying like you you're you're defining a pose, you're defining a given circumstance. What you're doing is you're telling the audience this is a story about boom, right? I don't know. Is that Michael Jackson? I don't know if that's like some like isn't that a cover for a movie or something? Anyway. This is a story about like this shape. I don't know what that means. Who knows what that means? But it is a given circumstance, right? And somehow you need to like elaborate on this shape, and you need to keep moving on and, and building onto that. And then, well, I mean that, that so that that's just sort of the idea of what the introduction is. It's this given circumstance. And in any movie, like the opening scene is like a really important scene because this is the first thing that people see. Uh, you don't want to introduce your narrative in a very poor light. Um, because people, you know, they, they say like the, the, I don't know what that saying is about first impressions, but first impressions are really important. Uh, if you mess up your first impression, then you got to like do a lot of work to, to, um, to, uh, account for that. Right. So in, in the, in the example of the happy birthday song, da, 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 uh, note that it's sort of like an unresolved issue, right? You can't. Like, I guess what I'm saying is this given circumstance is not complete. Like, you can't have a full... It's not like a, a cell phone ring where you know that by the end of it, it's done. That might be a bad example. It's not like a just a, a jingle, right? A jingle is like a, maybe a three-second, like... Da-da-da-da-da-da-do, right? Like, that is a whole... It's a complete idea, right? You don't need a beginning. Like, that in and of itself is... A beginning, middle, and an end, and that's a complete idea. It's completely rounded out. But with "Happy Birthday to You," it's not that, right? It's da 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 da. And and you just, as an audience member or as someone who's singing it, you just have this compulsion to be like, "Continue, <laughs> tell me more. We need to keep going, right?" Uh, and that comes from just a lot of like, there's a lot of music theory behind why that is for that particular sequence, but. Um, uh, but let's sort of like take that given circumstance and elaborate upon it in the second, in the, in the second measure, right? So the first one is da da da, <coughs> excuse me, da 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 right? So the second one is sort of a repetition of the first one, which is an often a really great device uh, for advancing a narrative to say, oh, let's try this given circumstance. Oh, that's interesting. Let's try to reapproach that, but try something that's slightly different. Let's tweak one component uh, to see if maybe we didn't resolve it just because there was one wrong thing, right? So, da 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 da, given circumstance, da 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 da, uh, uh, an augmentation on top of that given circumstance. Uh, and then the third, the third um, measure here is. Da 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 da. Uh, and this is often known. This is what is known as the climax of the narrative, or the um, uh, oh, yeah, it's mostly just known as the climax. Uh, and usually, the climax is the point of most tension. The the this is the point in which uh, like this is the the hy the um hyperbolized given circumstance. So the given circumstance is sort of awkward, or not awkward, but if, if the problem of the given circumstance is that there's da 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 da, right, it's this like peak that has, that comes back down, uh, and we can't quite resolve off of that peak, da 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 da, this is the point in the story which we have hit the highest of that peak, right? Uh, we've taken that dynamic and raised it to the nth, uh, to the most reasonable amount. I mean, obviously we could like be Mariah Carey and sing like three octaves up or whatever, but that's not the way that this, we want to make this sort of, this song to be more approachable so that most people can sing it. They don't need to like jump four octaves. Da 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 da. It's still a big jump. Da 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 da. And then listen to this one. Da 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 da. Like how appealing is that, right? That That's an ending 
we have resolved our problem. In fact, if you take the first measure and the last measure, da 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 I mean, you'd like kind of ruin the story, right? It's sort of like um, a spoiler alert, right? <laughs> So next time you're like at a party and people are like, all right, everybody, Joe's coming in. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. You can just sort of do that and, uh, you know, spoil the party. Um, but it is, I mean, you know, like the, you're cheating because you're getting to the end of the movie before you even like saw like the meaty cool parts, right? You're like, oh, here's the opening scene. Here's the ending scene. Uh, and they just, let's just sandwich them together and like let's rip out all the meat in between. It's a sandwich with no meat. It's just the bread. Pretty boring. Um, but, actually, so it is boring from, an, from like, um, from a perspective of an audience member, like someone who wants to engage with a narrative. That's actually going to be kind of boring if you just give me the first frame and last frame of a movie. But, that being said, if you're someone who wants to be kind of academic about this whole exercise, uh, there are, I just recently saw a video, um, I'll try to remember to link to it in the description, uh, somebody took a bunch of like really famous movies and showed like just the first like 20 i think it's like five seconds of the movie right next to the final five seconds of the movie and it's really beautiful it's like really stunning uh usually i mean if these movies are good you know the director has thought all right how do i want to introduce these people into the world and then in the end how do i want to rem you know how do i want to uh what is the resolution that i want to provide people about this world based on all the events that occurred in between um, so, uh, you know, we're going to jump back into dance momentarily. So if we were to dance to happy birthday to you, uh, it would probably be something, uh, I'm going to do, uh, my, my interpretive dance of happy birthday to you. Da, 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 Right? Um, I don't know, that, that ending may have, I could have punctuated that more. Da, 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 da. I don't know. Um, so that's, yeah, that's like a, just a, I don't know, that's amazing, right? That's amazing you're gonna like upload that video, that like little clip on Facebook and get a million shares off of it. No, uh, <laughs> not the most amazing dance, but I just wanna use it to illustrate like if you're hooking into the musicality of a song, uh, if you just sort of do it naturally, if you happen to know the song, you're going to hook into a narrative, right? You're going to hook into what is already there, uh, and you're just going to ride that narrative, and you're going to sort of let that layer inside of you. So, you know, da, 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 there, so you have this, like, concept, and you have an elaboration on that concept, and then you have some sort of, like, really bigger contortion on that, and then you come to some sort of resolution. Um, which, you know, uh, which is nice. <clears throat> um, and... You know, we can, we can sort of, like, once again, be really academic about all this stuff and sort of peer down from, from you know, this perspective and be like, oh, okay, interesting. Here's the beginning, the middle, and an end. Um, but the fact of the matter is, is that, you know, as a freestyle dancer, as someone, you know, who just sort of, like, hears music and is like, sweet, let's jam out, and you just get on the dance floor and you start messing around, uh, it's very possible that you're not going to be like, oh, I, don't, I, I wonder what my beginning is. Like, where do I start? How's my... You know, and, and I don't, so I guess what I'm saying is, like, don't let this put you into analysis paralysis, right? Like, uh, if all of these thoughts and ideas get planted in your brain and all of a sudden you find that you just feel like a bad dancer or whatever, or you feel like you don't know what you're doing on the dance floor all of a sudden, um, that's maybe a good thing. Maybe you need, you need that you need that little bump to like get you to realize that like oh you don't know at all what you're doing and that'll force you to become a better dancer uh but at the same time like who cares you know like the, the fact of the matter is is that like you can be uh if you just start listening to music and really cluing into what you like about the story um it's very likely that you're just going to have these things instinctively happen and i think really more likely than not just let them happen let them be kind of narratively, uh, narratively inspired. But, uh, you know, I wouldn't critique uh, somebody's freestyle dancing on whether or not they, like, opened, ended, and closed their set in a particular way. Uh, but sometimes, you know, and, and, like, this happens especially with, like, breakdancing. Uh, people, like, 
end up in a freeze, right? And and really what's so cool about that concept is that they there's all this crazy movement uh, and then all of a sudden they like hit like this pose, you know, they hit their, not the b-boy stance anymore. I mean, usually it's like an air freeze or whatever. So they're like hand planted on the ground and their body's in a co- crazy weird contorted place. And, and when they get there, it's like, it's magic, right? It's this idea, it's this feeling of like, uh, is that all of this activity was about getting to that one spot and when they land there on the beat and they, they like make eye contact with the audience, right? And they like have that grin and they, and you get a sense of like, oh yeah, they, they know what's up. They, they got it going on. Uh, that's, that's the punchline, right? That's the resolution, right? You have this crazy climax of activity and you have, usually you have the top rock of them sort of like approaching the dance floor and, um, and bouncing around. And, and it almost like when you look at a b-boy uh, and they're sort of moving around, it almost feels like they're like, they're wobbling around, like trying to find resolution, right? It almost feels like they're, uh, they're, it's like they're, they're drunk and they can't stand up right, um, or their their feet are like too. There's just too much energy in their feet. Uh, but once they like, you know, hit their air pose, then that energy is sort of dissipated. And they're like, no, 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 it's cool, guys. I got this. We're we're all good, right? Um, and uh, wow, that was a really weird tangent, um, but. Uh, but that being said, I guess like, uh, you know, every dance form, or every, uh, rather every narrative form, dance, music, uh, even painting, like even if it's like a still painting, often there's just a sense of a beginning, middle and end. If there's a, if it's a really good painting, uh, either you look from left to right, or maybe just like there are different parts of the painting that are like, oh, the eyes, they're first, they're the most engaging part. And then you look around and then there's like, oh, the, you know, the character's body is in a really weird shape or whatever. Uh, but there's something about their hands that really connect the piece together. And, and, and it's, so you don't typically, usually narrative is reserved for art forms that have that, um, have the uh, convenience of time, of being able to change over the dimension of time. Uh, but sometimes, you know, sometimes you can have narrative aspects of a, of a non-moving piece of like a um, of a uh, a painting or a statue or whatever um, and uh, let's see the so yes uh, I guess all forms of, uh, of narrative do have this it's fun to like uh, a lot of urban style dances especially but a lot of dance in general are, are inspired by uh, pop culture references um, I remember hearing that this for a lot of tutters um the inspiration came from like a, a bugs bunny a, 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 a looney tunes episode where bugs bunny has to like pretend to be like an egyptian fresco to hide from a dog or something in any case um <laughs> uh in any case there there's a lot of like borrowing from pop narrative uh from pop culture uh, into these these dance styles um, and so studying pop culture from like a, a slightly academic and nerdy perspective can be useful for sure uh, studying art history is definitely useful um, but to be more like specific the most I think useful part um, the most useful thing you can study when it comes to narrative forms uh, in dance is to watch uh, other is to you know spend a lot of time in, in the form of dance that you're trying to concentrate on and for me that's mostly liquid and digits and uh, and then borrow a lot of pieces from the other forms of dance that you have right which could be like or for me that's like popping botting booging and uh, and tutting and stuff um, and uh, these different dance forms often have like different uh, narrative arcs um, and I'll talk a little bit more about like what an arc is in a moment. But uh, for Liquid, for example, it is often like <clears throat> the viewer <coughs> um, is is sort of going on this journey where they are uh, exploring space. Or they're exploring like um, a problem, or they're exploring the sort of contortions of how space sort of works around it, right? So. Uh, you could just sit there and do the hand wave over and over and this is great for drilling like this is super important to like get the core mechanics down This is like practicing your scales 
But I never go to a concert. Well, I don't go to concerts in general, but I wouldn't go to a concert if someone was just playing their scales. And the same thing is I wouldn't like to watch anyone just practicing their scales. Um, so, you know, when it comes to uh, usually liquid forms, it's about like um, you're trying to glide across a surface, right? Liquid, right? So that, that narrative is like, you know, uh, often I've heard of this described as pulling or pushing, right? So to me, uh, if I were to perform pulling, right? And then if I were to perform pushing, it'd be something more like, right? Um, so the idea that there is like this um, intervening, uh, there, there's this like, there's this motivation. Now motivation, yes. Uh, motivation is a super important concept. And I know that when it comes to like talking about actors, often the joke uh, is, you know, the actor looks at the camera and the director and like, wait, 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 what's my motivation here? Um, this is cliche, I think, for people who aren't in the theater world or the movie or the acting world. Uh, but the idea that like an actor needs a motivation in order to perform a scene properly, that's like not like not even cliche. It's just like that is just fact, right? That, that's actually just how acting works. You kind of need motivation. Um, and usually, you know, people who are actually professional actors or even like who take acting seriously, whether or not they're professionals, they know that and they don't have to ask, what's my motivation, right? But the fact of the matter is, is like what my motivation is is like actually an important question uh, because it drives all your action um, so in other words uh, um, as an actor if you uh, read a play and while you're reading the play you, you notice wow this this character they're just like they're like really angry in this moment um, they, they they like they happen to have a lot of anger and then it converts into sadness right uh, what you don't do as an actor is you say, therefore, I must act angry and then be sad, right? Because um, that is actually not, those are like the symptoms of your motivation, right? Your, your motivation isn't to act angry. You're, so, for example, um, ah, here's a great one. Uh, if you say, oh, in this scene, this person is drunk. Uh, bad actors, especially younger actors, will do this thing where they like start like pretending to be drunk, right? So they like imagine what are all the um, like things that I saw when other people were drunk, and that's because they can't like walk around or whatever. Um, so you, what you're doing is you're taking like the shapes of drunkness and you're sort of applying it to your body. Um, but the <laughs> the one th thing that I heard and made an impression on me was if you're like. The important motivation for an actor when they're acting drunk is not that you're trying to be drunk, it's that you're trying to not be drunk, right? Like, what's really funny about watching a drunk person, well, it's not really funny, it's kind of really sad, but what what is super um, obvious when you watch a drunk person is that they're, like, trying their damnedest to not be drunk, right? They're, like, making eye contact, and they're, like, you can tell that there are these these other circumstances that require that they... They sort of like sway in weird ways, um, but but those are just sort of like not central to the human being's behavior. What's central to the human being's behavior is that they're they're performing everything that they would typically perform, but they're like trying to accommodate for the fact that their body doesn't really work in the way that you'd want it to, right? Um, and so this is sort of the case with anger. It's not that you like want to act out the story of anger, right? Uh, it's actually that you want to, uh, you need something and, and like, damn it, like the, the thing that you need is behind something else or whatever, right? Like, so therefore, uh, the only way I know how to get that thing is, um, is by, uh, by convincing this person uh, that they're worthless, right? Or, or like, I need to like convince somebody that like this is the thing that I need or I don't know like basically 
your action as an actor in this particular circumstance isn't how do I act angry because then you're just going to be loud and I've seen enough of that kind of acting and it's terrible. Uh, the same thing for sad or whatever, right? So taking that all the way back to dance. Um, oh, narrative. Why that ties into narrative? Sorry. Um, a character throughout a story will go through a bunch of touchstones, but they start with given circumstances. And those given circumstances are typically just like, you know, what is their background? What is their motivation? Uh, and where are they sort of going? Like, what might be, what do they perceive to be in their way? And what are the things that they, what are the things that they need to get? Um, and then at the end, <coughs> do they or do they not get that? Um, uh how, what is the journey that they arrive, they, they go through to get there? Um, and so that's sort of the narrative, uh, that's called the arc. The arc is sort of the change over time, and it's typically thought of as like, here's a given circumstance, here's a resolution, and they're kind of on the same level, but there's this heightened tension in the middle where they have to go like beyond their comfort zone in some way uh, to sort of get there, and that sort of heightened tension is, is what creates this arc so you you go somewhere and then you land somewhere else and, and that goes across this like you know this shape and that's why it's often called an arc um so uh how do you use this as a dancer right um uh it is possible that you would see a dancer and be like oh they're popping so they're angry <laughs> right boom 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 and you just sort of like that maybe that'll get that'll get you far enough to like uh, be like, oh, let's all be aggro when we, like, dance, right? And to me, you know, I don't know. I'm not super interested in that unless that anger is, like, really sophisticated and cool looking. Um, but, it, it, like, something that inspires me as popping is not more... It's not just about being angry, but it's about saying, like, yo, I gotta, like, lay down the law with my pops, right? Like, I gotta, like, come out here and be like, hey, everyone, this is how it is. It's like this and this, right? And now you have, like, some authority that you're asserting. Boom. Or maybe you're like being really dismissive about um, about the way that like uh, I don't know about the way other people think about X Y or Z, uh, and um, and you can sort of pop your way like out of that. Maybe you're like sort of trying to shake off uh, people's beliefs or something, right? So there are a lot of like different ways to think about these things, and when you're watching poppers um, or once again, watch a, a multitude of dance styles and, and notice how each dance style sort of approaches uh, the question of what is this dancer doing? What sort of, maybe like what sort of emotion are they experiencing? But underneath that, right, like what is the driving force? Why are they here? What is What are they trying to accomplish with this dance? What are they trying to like, uh, what sort of given circumstance do they ha have? What is the climax of their activity and what are they trying to resolve towards? And that is what is engaging. When you watch a dancer and, and you just can't take your eyes off of them, it's not because they're just going through the motions, right? It's not because they're making the shapes uh, that every other dancer in their field makes. It's because you're like, what is going on? This human being has a story, right? They're trying to tell something. And, and that, the fact that they have this story is what makes it so engaging. Um, and uh, I guess... One last piece of advice that I'll have here, and, and as I said, I'm blabbing on forever, and uh, I can sort of do really deep dives in like specific sentences that you had that I had said earlier. So if you like were like, whoa, that was a note that I want you to keep talking about forever, um, I clearly have the aptitude to do so and the interest to do so. So <laughs> one activity that might actually be useful uh, would be for you to not dance to electronic music. Um, because a lot of electronic music doesn't really, well, this is not fair. A lot of electronic music has like really short narratives that are repeated over and over again. Um, there is, there are clearly some electronic music, the better stuff that has like all these arcs built into them. Um, but I think that like the more simplistic, if you're like interested in getting into narrative, um, like there, electronic music can sometimes have like really weird, complicated, like, m like, smaller narrative right electronic music is more towards that like art film stuff right it's just where like it's kind of not really about narrative it's kind of more about these other things uh if you want to go way back and like just like take a really big picture of how narrative works and how you can incorporate that into your dance i would suggest listening to like uh good old-fashioned pop music uh or just like rock or whatever just like songs that are uh, especially ballads 
right? Uh, songs that um, tell a story, right? That have a structure, right? Have chorus, refrain, chorus, or whatever, like, you know, that has the, the standard structure. And you probably don't want it to be too long because I'm suggesting that you listen to it a bunch of times. So select like a two to three minute song, maybe a little bit more, uh, and listen to it. So also, you won't want to pick something that you just love because um, this will become easier. Uh, and as you're listening to it, take a sheet of paper and graph out the song, right? So like listen to the track um, and, you know, start, uh, let's see, in the upper, yeah, for you, start up here <laughs> and then just keep drawing and this will be like the, and then when you get to the end of the page, draw over here and then draw over here and draw over here. And what do I mean by graph out the song? Well, I don't really know. I mean, this is sort of like an abstract exercise, uh, but you could make it so that like, um, in the beginning, it's like really sparse and boppity boopity. So you like do a little, a bunch of pins or whatever, little, little like polka dots. Uh, and then eventually it sort of resolves into a tone that comes in from above. It goes, oh, or whatever. I don't know. I'm making up a song. It's a terrible song. <laughs> in which case you draw a line from up above and then you'd like make it really faint. And then it like, so you get the idea. Just like keep just sketching out what this song sort of feels like if you were to, if you had to put it down on paper. Um, and then like, you know, as it keeps going, you might like notice that there's like a repeated pattern and you know, with these pop songs, especially or rock songs, there are. Uh, so take that repeated pattern and like, you know, lift up, like, let's say you go through like, um, uh, a chorus. Uh, and then you happen to know that the chorus happens later. Like take borrow from the first time that you went through that chorus and keep what's similar and make any uh, embellishments if there are any differences, but keep just going through that and then you'll have verses and whatever. And then you'll have the end of the song, right? So you have the beginning of the song and then you have the end of the song. And you have this like nice sheet of paper that is the, the, represent the super abstract representation of what it is you saw. Um, take that and look at it, right? It's probably, it has some narrative and, and likely it's gonna have like a climax sort of nearish the end. Uh, it's going to have the given circumstances, which is how the big song begins. And it's gonna have a resolution, how the song ends. And if it's a really good song or if like, right, if it's a really good song, it's probably, and you connect to it in a narrative sort of way, you're probably gonna notice that the given circumstances and the resolution are probably kind of related. Like if you just, took a snapshot of the really small area that is the opening and took a snapshot of the ending, you could probably just like put those snapshots side by side. It might make a pleasant um, wall, might make some pleasant wall art or whatever. Um, and so do that, right? Uh, and then after that, do it again and just like keep, you know, maybe you can listen to it three or four times and keep embellishing as you as you listen to it and try to find new little pieces that maybe support the main narrative, support the, the central theme or the central arc to this piece. Um, and then just sort of try freestyling to it. And I'm gonna promise you that if you just sort of like did this exercise and you freestyled to it, um, you would probably just sort of accidentally fall into a narrative, right? Because you're what you're doing is you're going to uh, be inspired by these new parts of this music and you're gonna be able to see the music uh, from a big picture perspective. By the way, this is I'm talking about this as freestyling, but if you were to choreograph, this is sort of like a must. You have to like have a structural understanding on the piece of music so that you can land at the end when you need to land at the end. You can land on the climax of the piece when you can when you need to land at the climax of the piece. Uh, and the same thing, so for freestyling, you know, uh, you should be able to do the same thing as well. You should be able to to know when like there, there are some really important moments in the song and you want to be able to, to hit them, right? You want to be able to land uh, appropriately into those important moments uh, in a meaningful way. Um, so let's see how I did. <laughs> 38 minutes. Great. Um, well, thank you for watching uh, this lecture. Um, it, seriously, yeah, if you have any questions, if you're still here, uh, you should get like a prize. Um, <laughs> anyway, yeah, uh, if you have any questions, um, please do comment below. I love like hearing feedback and I, uh, I obviously love talking endlessly about narrative. I just don't know when to stop. Um, so I try to like cut a few things short now and again. Um, but yeah, feel free to ask me anything about what I've just talked about. Uh, and 
you know, uh, hopefully uh, I will have enough um, juice to, to just go on and wax poetic about those things as well. Um, so, yeah, thank you for tuning in. Um, if you like this video or if you like videos like this, uh, please show that by clicking that like button somewhere down here uh, below and um, subscribe and uh, comment and share with other people who like listening to random internet people talk at infinite length. All right, thanks again, and uh, see you next time. Peace.